Let us get back to 1930s, 40s perhaps when people were thinking about the following questions uh, from communications perspective and many other applications. I am given a continuous time signal analog signal. Is it possible for me to sample this analog signal and uh, use the samples for further processing? Uh, in, in the process of sampling, can I reconstruct the analog signal perfectly? Right? These are the questions which uh, were uh, hounding these people uh, in, in, in the 1930s and 40s for most of the communication engineers. And one such brilliant idea came from Shannon and I will I will just state uh, the, the, the ideas here. So, let us start with the following let x of omega be the spectrum of x of t. Right, x of t is a continuous time signal. X of t is uh, one upon two pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of omega e j omega t d omega, and we know this. This is x of omega is the Fourier transform of x of t, and then you can get the x of t from the inverse uh, Fourier transform. Now, if <coughs> x of omega is assumed to be 0 outside the band modulus of omega is less than 2 pi times b right then we can write x of t as 1 upon 2 pi integral minus 2 pi b 2 plus 2 pi b x of omega e j omega t d omega just straightforward. I mean you can think about why we need to make this assumption here about the band limitedness. I mean most signals are band limited. I mean you, you think about um, speech signal, you, you think about most natural signals that are band limited and even if they are not band limited by filtering you can make them band limited. Okay. Now, let small t be n upon 2 times b. Therefore, I can get the samples x of n upon 2 b as follows. So, this is basically 1 upon 2 pi minus 2 pi b to 2 pi b. So, basically the continuous time t is replaced by n upon 2 b. <coughs> this is x of omega e j omega n upon 2 b d omega. Right? Now, you have to really interpret this. The left hand side has x of t at the sampling points the integral on the right which is this is essentially the 
nth coefficient in the Fourier series expansion of x of omega <coughs> over the interval minus b to plus b as a fundamental period. Right. I mean, this is the way we interpret this uh, this equation. Now, x of n upon two b. I think this sequence that we have for n equals zero, one, so on. These determine the Fourier coefficients in the series expansion of x of omega. Now, since we assumed that x of omega is 0, for frequencies greater than b and x of omega is determined fully if the coefficients are known right we can say that the samples x of n upon 2 b determine x of t completely right we started off with the spectrum and then linking with the continuous time signal then basically sampling and then interpreting this as basically the Fourier coefficients the series expansion of the spectrum right. So, one of the questions that naturally comes to us is how do we construct or if you want you may add the word re con reconstruct x of t from the samples right our intuition tells us we should have some kind of interpolation filters right we should we have these samples and there should be some interpolation filter which has to go through these samples and it has to be the right interpolation filter if you are to reconstruct this right. So, we will try to get towards this idea more formally within a mathematical framework ok. So, you have a basic idea now I take a spectrum I sample the I take the spectrum and I look at the Fourier coefficients in the series expansion of the spectrum and I, I, I get these values and, and how do I interpret these values as right. And the other question is I have these samples can I get my continuous time signal back. So, let us start with some very basic stuff that you that you know from signal processing right. We will start with
with the Dirac Coomb um, function. Coomb because it is really a Coomb. I mean Dirac function because a delta function and if you have a train of the delta functions it is basically like a comb right comb that you use for your combing your hair. Now summation n equals minus infinity to plus infinity delta of t minus n times capital T is this Dirac comb sequence and the sequence is periodic. And since the sequence is periodic, it has a Fourier series representation. I mean, you can just get the exponential form, right? You can you can write it as some cn times e power j two pi k upon capital T times small t and you can you can figure out this coefficient c n right and if you if you solve for this Fourier series representation Okay, now, this C n you can compute it to be 1 upon t. Okay, it is very straightforward just plug in the formula for the exponential series C n equals integral from t naught minus t by 2 plus t you know just get the integral form and then you know you, you will get to solve the CNs straightforward. Um, small uh, uh, typo here uh, this has to be C k here not C n. So, let us change the uh, subscript this is a C k and uh, this is a C k here. Okay. Now, Basically, we can say that this is 1 upon t e power j 2 pi k upon capital T times this t and this is basically Fourier pair and you can write this is 1 upon t some uh, k equals minus infinity to plus infinity delta omega minus k upon t. Right Fourier transform uh, pairs. Now, let us consider some uh, k equals minus infinity to plus infinity f of k just the Fourier coefficients. So, I have the summation k equals minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, f of k I replace it by this integral because this is how I would compute the Fourier uh, coefficient right Fourier, tra Fourier transform f k. Now, this can be written in this form assume I can do the exchange. So, I have minus infinity to plus infinity f of t summation k equals minus infinity to plus infinity power minus j 2 pi k t. Now, you can say that this summation can be replaced as I will put this in pink 
summation n equals minus infinity to plus infinity delta t minus n note that capital T is 1 if you go in in this form here get a capital T here if the t equals 1 you would have this this form right. So, therefore, I can simplify this equation as now again I do this exchange back sigma n equals minus infinity to plus infinity then integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of t I think when I have an integral I have to put a dt here right it is, is something to be careful about ok. Now, <coughs> so I, I exchange this back again assume this exchange is possible. Now, <coughs> this is delta t minus n dt and this would exist when t equals n therefore, this is basically summa f of n right. We are now sort of we have linked the time samples to the frequency samples the summation right. Now, let us sort of go one step forward. Similarly, consider a periodic sum s of omega plus k upon t this is basically sigma k equals minus infinity to plus infinity. I have a spectrum here basically I take a, some periodic copy essentially of the spectrum right this is what is happening here this is how I would interpret this sum. Now, this is basically Fourier because Fourier transform is a linear transform right this is I can I can take the Fourier here Fourier of s of t e power minus j 2 pi k upon capital T times small t this is just basically the modulation property right. So, this can be interpreted as the Fourier of s of t is taken outside because there is no index k here summation k equals minus infinity to plus infinity right e power minus j 2 pi k upon t capital T right because the Fourier transform is linear I can just this is this is I am making use of linearity here at this step. Now, you can interpret this as t times summa n equals minus infinity to plus infinity delta t minus n times capital T right because we because from our relationship from starting with the Dirac comb sequence. Now, this is basically the Fourier transform of S of t times capital T times sigma n equals minus infinity to plus infinity delta t minus n times capital T. Now, these things are existing for t equals n times capital T right otherwise it is vanishing. So, therefore, this t I can replace as n t and roll everything in the summation. So, I can write this as the Fourier of summation n equals minus infinity plus infinity s of small n times capital T times capital T times delta t minus 
n times capital T, right? Because this exists at t equals n t, not otherwise. So therefore, I will I will pull this here. Now I can say that the the last part is basically summa n equals minus infinity to plus infinity t times s of n times capital T times the Fourier of delta of t minus n times capital T and I can interpret this as t times s of n t that is I am having samples of the signal and then linking them with this modulation modulation term. Well, uh, if you follow the convention that omega is 2 pi f, uh, we just have this to be f 